To be honest, when I first watched TPK Euphonium, I wasn't all that amazed in what it had to say. Maybe I misunderstood what the story was trying to convey, or maybe these characters just didn't line up in how I personally felt. That's not to say that I was uninterested, since I never once thought that Hibike Euphonium was bad or had little to no substance. On the contrary, I thought it was a great telling of the personal struggles between band members and how each character had to overcome their own internal obstacles. Every detail from the sound design, background, and presentation was of course gorgeous. However, even with these aspects, the series never resonated that profoundly with me until I watched the second season. It was at episode 10 when I finally realized just how invested I was into these characters. It's rare to find a series that share the same intimate thoughts you have about yourself, but Hibike Euphonium presents it in such an intricate manner through its colorful cast. It's the reason why there's such a diverse consensus on who is most relatable, because every character's turmoil is reflective on someone else's life. For me, that person was Kumiko. There's just something endearing about having seen the evolution of our character from the beginning of season 1 to the end of season 2. It's not just a case of how much she changed throughout the series, but how that transformation helped me better understand myself. In this video, I hope to encapsulate everything about what makes Kumiko such an amazing character and how her progression was paramount into what made Hibike Euphonium so captivating. The series begins with the result of a middle school band competition being announced, with Kumiko and Reina sitting together. After hearing that their band didn't make it into nationals, we see complete opposite reactions from the two. Everything from how Kumiko sits to the way she talks in the scene presents her as apathetic. Reina, on the other hand, is utterly upset that the band didn't make it, with tears running down her face, crying, I'm so upset I could die. Kumiko is amazed that Reina believed they actually stood a chance, even stating out loud, did you really think we could make it into nationals? Before realizing what she just said, Reina gets visibly upset and leaves while Kumiko sits there with her indifference. From the opening scenes of episode 1, there's a distinct vibe that can be felt from each of the characters. Kumiko is presented as apathetic, seemingly not to care about her surroundings, and for the first few episodes, this holds true. Her comments on Reina could hardly be seen as harsh, but despite that, still has guilt over hurting Reina's feelings. In the early episodes of season 1, Kumiko remains as a passive and indifferent bystander. She hesitates to join the high school band and even tries to play a different instrument than the euphonium, but somehow gets stuck with it anyway. We later discovered that her reason for playing the euphonium was that she wanted to perform with her elder sister. Kumiko wanting to play a different instrument wasn't because she was tired of the euphonium, but because she didn't have that fundamental reason to play. Her sister had already dropped out, so she rationalized her thoughts by saying she was bored of playing the same instrument. This level of character subtlety is rare to find in other shows, and Hibike uses this as a way to humanize its characters. We're never given this information directly either. Kumiko doesn't say, I don't want to play the euphonium because my sister quit band. Instead, we're shown snippets of our past while Kumiko acts as if she doesn't care. It's up to us to piece together the information. As the following episodes ensue, Kumiko's relationship with Reina starts to develop, and through this she's able to find her passion for the euphonium. While other people are intimidated and jealous of Reina's ability to play, Kumiko, however, sees Reina both as an inspiration to get better and a partner she can fully trust. At the end of episode 3, Reina plays a trumpet solo on a hill overlooking the skull as she later screams in frustration. Kumiko's expression lights up as she listens to the performance. This is the first instance that she's finally understood someone else. She's connected to Reina at this point in time, and over the course of the series, we see Kumiko start to embrace her emotions rather than to hide it. But as of right now, she's still got a long way. Although, going home from school, Kumiko discovers that Reina takes the same train line as her and attempts to make small talk as to not make it awkward between the two. However, she's still a bit anxious around Reina avoiding sensitive topics, which is reflected in the way she walks. When Taki-sensei is brought up, Kumiko gives a general opinion of what everyone thinks of him as to not hurt Reina's feelings again, although she slips by saying she doesn't think the band is good enough to make nationals. Fearing a negative reaction, she preemptively apologizes only to see Reina smile. This is the first time Reina has shown a kind side to her, and suddenly Kumiko's anxiousness turns into amazement as she ponders at how mysterious Reina is. This scene is a pivotal change in Kumiko's perception of Reina. In the past, she's mostly had awkward interactions with her, perceiving Reina as a person who gets upset easily, but now she's starting to see just how special she really is. 
Up until now, we've always seen Kumiko put on a facade of indifference in order to downplay her cynicism, and this can be seen from her everyday interactions. When talking to any one of her classmates, Kumiko often makes candid remarks about a situation, but then instantly backpedals as to avoid any confrontation. However, by doing this, she limits herself from any meaningful conversation, taking a more passive approach. Kumiko is unable to understand anyone on a genuine level if she herself isn't honest. And this is what Hibike Euphonium is trying to do. It's about understanding people and being understood. It's about growing to find a passion and putting in the effort needed. However, try as she might, Kumiko is different to everyone else even her friends, and this is realized in episode 8 where Reina and Kumiko take a hike together. If it wasn't clear from the visuals, Kumiko sees Reina as no ordinary person. She's special and it's this fascination that draws her closer. Reina begins to chip away the facade Kumiko has put up, but she doesn't dislike Kumiko's true, cynical personality. In fact, in many ways, they're similar. Kumiko is the only person who can stand as equals with Reina, as she's the only one Kumiko can be honest with. Reina, on the other hand, is unable to get close with anyone because everyone else is intimidated by her ability, except for Kumiko. As the conversation continues, rude remarks are used to describe each other, but not as a means to demean one another, but as a sort of appreciation. As Reina puts it, she can't believe there's another person with such a terrible personality, just like her. As we reach the climax of the hike, only two stars in the whole night sky are visible, with all the city lights shining below them. While the view may be spectacular, Reina states, it wasn't exactly that I wanted to see it, but that she wanted to do something the others wouldn't. And with Reina's explanation, the whole scene is finally understood. Kumiko and Reina are the two stars shining in the vast and open night sky. They have the potential to become far greater, while everyone else is in the festival, stuck below them in the city with each light indistinct from the next. Reina declares to Kumiko that she'll become truly special, the only way she knows how, by playing her trumpet. She even implies that Kumiko can become special too, even going as far as to touch her lips. It's at this moment where Kumiko becomes fully entranced in Reina's ethereal beauty, even deciding for herself that she too wants to become special. However, unknown to Kumiko, as she'll soon find out, the path to becoming special is a painful one. Kumiko has already started a change, even without knowing it. She's been inspired by Reina to become someone special like her, and practices every day to perfect her instrument. She grows ever more passionate about playing the euphonium until it becomes her only activity. Yet, despite all the effort she's put in, it feels as if she can't improve. All the pent-up stress and emotion come crashing down in the penultimate episode as she runs screaming, I want to improve. She breaks down on the bridge, finally echoing Reina's words from episode 1. I'm so upset, I could die. A montage of flashbacks pass by as Kumiko realizes how Reina felt in the beginning. After all the time and effort she's put into playing the euphonium and finding out it's still not good enough can be gut-wrenching. Kumiko's never experienced that much passion for anything before. But after being put in Reina's shoes, she's finally understood how someone can be so passionate. Kumiko has now got a newfound appreciation for playing, even loudly stating in front of her sister that she likes the euphonium. This is not only one of the most powerful episodes in terms of character progression, but it allows us as the viewer to empathize with all of Kumiko's struggles, watching her apathy slowly become molded into passion. What makes Hibike Euphonium stand out is how true to life everything feels. Kumiko doesn't have an overly dramatic realization about herself, but it's through the subtle nuances and exchanges she has with other people. Her breakdown on the bridge feels personal to us because we've watched her grow all this time. The struggles that she faces doesn't have any clear black and white answers. It's more complicated than that. In many ways, the biggest hurdle she must overcome is herself. She lies by pretending not to care about playing in band, but whether she admits it or not, Kumiko doesn't just like the euphonium, she loves it. And as the first season nears its end, Kumiko has eventually comes to term with her euphonium as a cathartic performance ensues in the last episode. And so the next piece begins. As Hibike continues into its second season, Kumiko has grown fond of playing the euphonium. However, she's still a bit distant to the people around her. If the first season was about finding a passion that makes you happy, then Hibike's second season is about being honest to the people closest to you and how those relationships define you as a person. This season focuses on the relationship Kumiko has with Asuka and her sister Mamiko while Reina takes a back seat. 
Season 2 begins with a hidden conflict from the third years in concert band. Nozomi wants to rejoin the band but isn't allowed by Asuka because it'll cause distress to Mizore. When Kumiko asks about the situation, she's unsure about Asuka's reasonings. However, Asuka replies in a joking way as if to subtly imply that Kumiko isn't ready for such a heavy talk. And in that respect, she's right. For the longest time, Kumiko has always been haphazard when dealing with sensitive topics, and Asuka notices this. She merely gives a dilemma and walks off, forcing Kumiko to reflect on the situation. This notion that Kumiko isn't ready for sensitive talk is further enforced in a similar scene where she discovers Taki's wife had passed away. She's too afraid to tell Reina and so it lingers in her thoughts, keeping her awake at night. As the situation escalates, Kumiko is unable to stop Nozomi from meeting Mizore, but because of this, it's found out that Mizore only avoided Nozomi because she thought Nozomi didn't see her as a close friend. Had Kumiko explained the issue with Nozomi, the misunderstanding could have been resolved much earlier. Hippike Euphonium presents this theme of always confronting your emotions rather than hiding them. If Nozomi and Mizore had never met, then the whole misunderstanding would have continued, but it's through connection and empathy that they finally resolve their feelings. In many ways, this moment will mirror the final confrontation Kumiko has with Asuka. In the following episodes, Kumiko witnesses the family drama between Asuka and her mother, leaving her completely speechless. Asuka's mother is insistent that her daughter leaves the band to focus on her studies. However, through some dialogue and visual cues, we know there's a much more personal reason. Asuka refuses to quit the band because it means so much to her. We'll find out later that this situation is strikingly similar to Kumiko's home life. The dynamic Kumiko has with her older sister feels very real, for me at least. The one sentence replies they have with each other to avoid any real conversation not only established what sort of connection they had, but it really reminded me of my own older sisters. Through carefully timed flashbacks, we're shown that when Kumiko was younger, she was very close to her sister and even wanted to play an instrument with her. However, as she grew older, Kumiko's sister was less passionate about Ban and quit in order to focus on her education. Or at least, that's what we're told. In season 1, Mamiko barely had any screen time, and in the few scenes she was in, Mamiko always had this attitude of superiority always criticizing Kumiko for playing the euphonium. However, when finally confronted in episode 12, Mamiko seemed to be tunnel vision in her argument, nagging Kumiko about university as if to say that's what was most important in her life. Kumiko rebuttals by saying that there is a point to playing. Beyond her future or her education, the euphonium is what makes her happy. Kumiko ultimately wins the argument by passionately stating that she likes the euphonium. Her sister is surprised from her answer and immediately backs down. And this is because Kumiko has found something worthwhile. She's invested into something that she loves. This is a huge step for Kumiko as a character because it's the first time she's ever been that assertive. At the beginning, Kumiko would have never said something so bold, but through the nuances of playing and interacting with people, Kumiko has come to terms with what makes her happy, and that's character development that cannot be understated. While in the first season, it was obvious that Mamiko resented Kumiko for playing the euphonium, we didn't exactly know why she felt that way. In season 2, Kumiko's turbulent relationship with her sister becomes ever more present. We found out that making it into university wasn't an ambition for Mamiko, but an expectation from their parents. She's never been truly happy with dropping out of ban and so has this resentment for Kumiko because she's still free chasing after her happiness. Mamiko comes to this realization and so drops out of university in the distress of her parents to chase after what she really wants, her happiness. However, in episode 8, Mamiko gets into an argument with her parents as Kumiko sits on the couch, trying to drown out the voices from her phone. I can't tell you just how realistic this scene is because if you've ever had your parents get into a heated argument with one of your siblings, you act as if the situation doesn't affect you. But in reality, it should, because you are family after all. In the same episode, when Kumiko goes to ask Asuka if she's quitting the band, she's met with the same response Mamiko gave when she was younger keep talking and I'll sew your mouth shut. This is an intentional similarity as to denote how Kumiko perceives Asuka. She doesn't want her relationship with Asuka to fade away like it did with her sister, being distant and unhappy. However, unlike her relationship with Mamiko, Kumiko intends to confront Asuka directly in hopes of getting her to stay. We then get to episode 10 of the second season, which I think is by far the best episode of Hibike Euphonium. Mamiko finally opens up her feelings towards how she felt with Kumiko in a genuine conversation at home. Being the older sister, she had a warped perception of what it meant to be an adult. She thought that enduring the pressure and never going against her parents' expectations was what it meant to be mature. 
However, in that way of thinking, she was never happy, always whining and discontent with her life. Mameko never fought for her freedom, but instead was just putting up with it. This made her resent and grow jealous of Kumiko because their parents allowed her the freedom to do anything she wanted. Although, from Kumiko's perspective, their parents were always proud of Mameko's achievements, always praising her and even telling Kumiko to be just like her. This scene is not only an exceptional portrayal of the relationship between the two sisters, but it's also a setup to Kumiko's emotional character arc. Mameko says that she'll be leaving the house so that she can chase after her dreams, even telling Kumiko to not have any regrets later on, even if they are painful. Kumiko, having a stoic attitude, behaves as if Mameko leaving is no big deal. But when it transitions to Kumiko on the train, reminiscing through all her memories of her sister, she begins to cry. Unable to stop the tears running down her face, Kumiko at this moment has embraced her true feelings from Mameko. After all, she was the inspiration for taking up the euphonium in the first place. Losing a person that close to you? How could Kumiko not be sad? This show gets people. It understands that it's often during the quieter moments do characters have the biggest revelations, and this scene is a true embodiment. Kumiko loves her sister, but is unable to convey her feelings properly, and so she's filled with regret. However, it's at episode 12 where everything comes full circle. As the third years are saying their goodbyes for the lost performance, Kumiko spots her older sister and frantically chases after her. On the bridge, Kumiko is finally able to be honest with Mameko after all this time, and says it better than I ever could. The confrontation between Kumiko and Asuka in episode 10 is what defines CBK Euphonium as an amazing show. Kumiko wants Asuka to play in the Nationals, even stating that all the band members want her back, but Asuka rebuttals saying that Kumiko's argument is a convenient excuse. She points out all the reasons why it's better for her not to compete, arguing with a mature yet cynical mindset. She even calls out Kumiko and criticizes her for being too passive during any meaningful conversation, even this one. How could Kumiko really know the feelings of others if she herself puts on a facade as a barrier? Asuka thinks that she's the adult, as if acknowledging reality is what makes her mature. But that's exactly why Kumiko's sister was so unhappy. Just as Mameko has come to learn, Asuka is believing under the false pretense that accepting the harsh reality is what makes her the adult, when in fact she's still also a child. Kumiko wins the argument over Asuka because she's finally decided to step up and be honest about her emotions. She's the one who wants to play with Asuka and so Kumiko will say it, even if it means being selfish. This scene is the culmination of Kumiko's actions and feelings poured out in the most raw and poignant manner. Every precious interaction she had with every one of her family and friends led up to her growth as a person, always making mistakes but ever learning through experience. It's something to both relate and admire her as a genuine person. She's not perfect, but so is Asuka. By the end, Kumiko is an emotional wreck as Asuka seeks to comfort her. Kumiko's feelings have reached Asuka as she won't even let Kumiko see her face. I believe this episode of Hibike Euphonium to be one of the most sincere and genuinely relatable episodes in anime that I've seen. It's the product of having spent so much time watching Kumiko growing out of her shell and embracing her emotions. It's a humanizing trait that every person should strive for. How many times have you been in a situation where you later thought, I wish I could have done something different? Kumiko as a character drives this message home of never having regrets in your life. She's the perfect encapsulation of this theme because she is flawed. Kumiko wasn't the best sister or friend in the world, but that's what made her journey so endearing. As we head towards the end of the series, there's an uncomfortable and even restless atmosphere in the last episode. The third years are graduating and all the underclassmates are saying their emotional goodbyes. Kumiko, however, is now a changed person from when she began. She doesn't want to leave these feelings unresolved and so tries to find Asuka one last time. Kumiko spots Asuka walking alone in a snowy school ground and confesses to her proclaiming how much she's grown to love her and that she'll feel lonely when she's gone. But it's that very reason why she'll continue to play. 
Asuka hands over her notebook to Kumiko, and this speaks volumes to how much she cares. Beyond anything she could say, the two have made an everlasting bond that they'll both never forget. Much like real life, the characters in Hibike Euphonium put on facades as a front to hide their true personalities. Kumiko behaves indifferently to hide her cynicism, Reina acts emotionless only to reveal her heated passion for music, and Asuka puts on a weirdly outgoing persona, forever hiding her real feelings towards anything. These aren't simple shows where the characters have their own problems resolved by the end of the episode. It's a much more nuanced and subtle take between the interactions of characters and how they define each other as people. You can't always know what people are thinking or feeling. It's impossible to always tell. But through experience and shared connection, empathy will arise when you least expect it. Our time with Kumiko watching her struggle and play the euphonium presents such an honest reflection of what it means to find purpose in one's life. If you entrench yourself in the community, you'll find moments in your life that'll continue to shape who you are as a person. No matter the circumstance, whether it's the joy of winning gold or getting upset about your ability to play, these are important experiences to learn from. The progression of Kumiko as a person should be taken as a great example of how no matter the indifference you have to the world around, you'll always find a passion you'll love. The story presented here isn't the most complex, but that's precisely why it can be personal to so many people. You don't need to run the most interesting lives to find a purpose truly worthwhile. All you have to do is accept yourself and learn from your mistakes in order to grow as a person. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. What matters is that you tried your hardest, never half assing your emotions because that's how the pivotal moments in your life are formed. That's what I took from Hibike Euphonium and that's why I think Kumiko is such an amazing character. Hibike Euphonium understands people, and no matter what you think of the show, it's impossible to deny the impact it's had. It's not forced animation, and it's not Yuri Bait. It's a genuine coming of age story about personal growth, and I'll definitely never forget how warm it sounded.